So my name is Jonathan Leung. I'm from Arcade Repair Tips. For those of you guys who don't know what Arcade Repair Tips is, it's basically a blog that's dedicated to teaching people about how to start repairing games. We start from basically square one with a lot of our videos, if you guys have ever seen them. How many people have seen our videos? Okay, we've got a couple. Okay, so if you have seen them, they're very, very basic. They start out very, very simple. And uh, I've been doing it with this man here since 2008. We've been running this blog. And we like to think that we do it kind of in the easy, an easy approach that gives you a lot of confidence as a beginner as to just getting your feet wet into repairing games. And so today we're going to be just talking about an overview of what you're going to need as far as basic troubleshooting of an arcade game. And me and Tim have been working on arcade games. I'll just give you a little background on us. We've been working on arcade games since about 2001. Tim was working on them way before I was. He's been working at Chuck E. Cheese for 11 years, 11 years doing arcade repair there. And you also did arcade repair at a local operator when you were a kid. So, and then I came along, I met him, and from there on we've been kind of a team. We've been teaching each other about arcade repair, and then all of a sudden we thought, why aren't we sharing this information with everybody? So we designed arcade repair tips to share information about arcade repair with each and every one of you guys, plus everybody who goes to our site and watches our videos. Okay, well I think that's enough background on us. I'm gonna let it, let Tim, I like to call him Mr. Arcade Repair Tips, but I'm gonna let Tim take it over from here, and he's gonna talk about basically what happens when you buy an, ar an arcade game at an auction and you don't know what to do? Maybe it's broken or whatever. So, Tim, come on up here and we'll get started. Well, thanks, Jonathan. Uh, again, we never claim to be the guru gods of repair, but we do want to share what we know, and hopefully that will help you guys some or give you some confidence in working in a game. How I many you know somebody had to show you, right? You had to, anybody, we were talking about earlier, anybody try to take a pinball glass out without anybody ever showing you? Right, and the problem that I was facing was growing up. Uh, of course, I remember a guy in our church owned the very first arcade in uh, in my small town, Falls Valley, Oklahoma, and uh, I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And uh, I would go up there, and he would say, "Go to Radio Shack and pick up this." Remember when you could get parts at Radio Shack? Wasn't that cool? And so we'd go and run down to Radio Shack, and he'd say, "We get the book out by Atari." Have y'all ever seen that? The, the Gaming Repair Bible. If you don't have one, look for it. It's called The Book by Atari. And we'd open it up and he'd say, okay, it says to twist this wire here. And he'd get shocked and I'd say, okay, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I always tell people, sometimes I can't always tell you what to do, but I can sure tell you what a few things not to do, okay? But in, the, in our years, what I found was, at first, the information, we could call up Atari, we'd call up Williams, and boy, they would just tell you all this stuff. And then we call the silent years. It's like only the super tech guy knew the info and he would charge you, you know, a couple hundred dollars come out and change your fuse and tell you it was the flux capacitor. Everybody met that guy? And oh, did you ever feel like you got overcharged for something that's kind of like a used car salesman? Our arcade repair guys seem to have that uh, thing about them. So we wanted to change that. Another thing, I didn't want to do this forever. We do uh, our local area. Tyler and Smith County and about surrounding three or four counties, I could work full time and do this and I, would, I realized I would not make any money at it. I might as well work at McDonald's and flip burgers. But, um, so I didn't want to do that forever, but we wanted to pass on the knowledge. So we started uh, Arcade Repair Site and uh, we now have over 50 videos on YouTube. We have uh, three DVDs which we brought with us in case you want to purchase them. Uh, we do have some for sale and you guys can buy them if you want, it will help you. The, what's included on the DVDs that's not free on the internet is like a, a lot of the basic stuff and how we got to that point of shooting the video and how we actually change, how we saw it or stuff like that. And bloopers, of course, if you've never seen any of our bloopers, um, well, I, I'll leave that alone. This is, we had some fun. We always have fun, I mean, you gotta have fun what you do, right? You gotta enjoy this. You better enjoy working on games. If you're gonna own a game, you need to learn at least a little bit about how to repair them. So the first thing that we want to talk about is just some basic tools that are needed. And I know a lot of you guys probably you wanna give away a prize? Sure. Give away something. Okay. I'm getting out some tools. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, six nine zero zero eight two. Who we got? Come on up here. Now I got some stuff in this box, it's just kinda of random. I have some side art. I don't know if you need side art, but we got some stuff in here. You need to look. This is our toolbox here, so you can take something out of here, or if you need center, you can take the side art, or you can take one of those joysticks. You take whatever you want. If you take side art, take two pieces. So, you get one for each side. 
I have Badlands side art, and I think Street Fighter 2 side art. So. It's always fun when you're traveling two and a half hours trying to remember to bring everything right and not trying to bring too much. Um, everybody knows what this is. This one's about 30 years old, and you can tell it's been dropped a few times. Uh, digital multimeter, right? You need, you need one. I highly recommend that you get a decent one, you know. By all means, get something that has a continuity beat test. Everybody know what I'm talking about, a diode test that beeps. That, that'll help you some. Uh, something simple, I, I just like this one. This is a fluke. Uh, it's just real simple. AC, DC, dial check, you know. You seen those kind that have like 800 different dial settings and stuff? Keep it simple. This, this works good for what we do. Uh, you'll need a multimeter. You'll need some type of soldering iron. And everybody has their favorite. We like Weller just because they heat up really fast and they cool down really fast. And that's important when you're ready, or especially like us a lot of times, you're fixing something on the fly. So you're going to need also um, desoldering. I used to use this guy all the time. Everybody remember these from the Radio Shack? Really used to sell those. <laughs> they work really good, especially like when you're doing a cap kit or something. Um, the more board repair and stuff I do, these aren't super great for board repair. What I'd like there is a desoldering braid, and I'll pull that out. Um, a flux pin. You guys ever have solder that just seems like it will never heat back up? Right? It takes forever, and by the time you get it heated up, you start burning the board. Flux remover will help you, and this, these little pins like this you can put on there. Um, we'll go through just a few. You know, I know what these are called. They got a crude name. Yeah, the crude name. The Radio Shack calls these nippy cutters, right? Uh, Excite is a good brand. These come in really handy because you can clip little bitty stuff. Um, I see people that use regular wire cutters, and that's fine for wire cutting. But when you do boards and stuff, these little guys just come in handy. I'm just pulling out some stuff. You know, you'll need regular wire cutters, uh, wire strippers, things that, you know, I mean, you can get the cheap stuff like this. This is about a Harbor Freight, about a dollar and a half or two dollars. But the more you're going to do, the more you're going to want a better pair. And even just upgrade like a Harbor Freight kind, something like this, that you can put in there. And, you know, when you start, anybody build a MAME or you do a 60 in one, you're going to. That's a lot faster than in this guy. Anyway, just to show you a couple of examples there. Um, uh, your other household tools, you're going to need like screwdrivers, um, nut drivers, sockets, and stuff. Needle nose plier. Uh, me and Johnson work, and I'm like, give me the world's greatest invention. I love these things. Use them a lot in games, right? When we're in there and repairing stuff. Um, these right here, remember, these also used to be sold at Radio Shack, I think they still, you can get them at least online. Uh, these are Molex crimpers, and everybody knows what Molex is. When I say Molex, it's like saying the word Kleenex, right? There's 18 brands, but they're all Kleenex to you when you need to blow your nose, right? Give me a Kleenex. Molex is a brand of connector that's in a whole lot of games, but it's not always the Molex brand, so you need to know that. But the connectors, you're going to need to know how to use and work on them. And you'll need like a pin pusher. Have I seen one of these? You take and extract the pins, push it in there and pops them out. Repinning games. I know I'm kind of going fast. We don't have a lot of time. All this stuff is on our website. I'm just giving you an overview of the stuff that we use. This one in particular is called my arcade toolbox. If you repair pinball games, you're going to need something that looks like those in a tool that looks like this. All these links. This came from pinbits.com. Have you guys ever used this? Okay. You need, need, need to know what I'm talking about. Anybody know these kind of connectors where you take the wire and you push it in there and you take a screwdriver and you go and you try to get it in there and then it falls out? This little guy right here, you see, is made for that. 
and it pushes it and it'll make a little pop it'll go pop 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 so you ever open up a pinball back glass and you look at that and you got all these wire connectors that are burn up and you're like oh there's a problem you know it's not real hard to decide and you got all these brown connectors you can get this from pinbits.com we're also recording this by the way so you can come back and listen to that this is 20 bucks little kit like that make a lot of game repairs also i remember older games i have a sea wolf you know remember sea wolf that game has a lot of these connectors on it and it's a really super way i use most of the time when I go to repair one, I see where somebody has cut that and soldered the wire straight onto there. It's just, here's my viewpoint on stuff like that. Make, if they put it in a connector, there's a reason. Why didn't they solder it on there? All right? It was made like that but so you can connect it. And one day, if you stick around and have the game long enough, you may want to take it off. So why not just take a couple minutes and repair it the right way? And that's another thing we talk about. Of course, solder. You guys, everybody know they. Uh, Gene is selling this stuff in there at a good deal. Way better. I don't know what his price is this year, but it's way cheaper than you can buy it anywhere else. You can pick that up here. Um, I like these kits like this. Um, everybody knows, you know, kind of a tackle kit. Something I keep a lot of connectors and stuff with me. Uh, also make them for fuses. Okay, and, and, and you know we like it when. Uh, we go to the game and we open it up and they say it don't work and you say, oh, I see the fuse is really toasty down there. Or they've taken the Wrigley's gum wrapper and that's always a great fix, right? <laughs> the more I repair games, the more now I don't go, wow, oh, it's only a fuse. Now I go, what made the fuse blow in the first place, right? So begin to get a little deeper in your repair than just popping fuses, but hopefully you do pop a fuse in and it works. Also, games today, everybody knows what this little, y'all seen these little bit sets like this at Harbor Freight or somewhere? Man, um, y'all know the company ICE? They put about 18 different kinds of screws. I think they just open up and throw a screw bucket out there and whatever they pick up. They'll use square heads, torque bits, Phillips, flat, and uh, so it's a good thing to have these around. And what's cool about them is if you have a quarter inch um, socket or a nut driver, that will fit on there. And that makes it kind of a multi-tool. Or you can get one of these. This is a quarter inch socket I put on here. And that makes it a little multi-tool. I know I'm probably talking. You guys probably know this stuff. But just in case, right? So that helps especially on those games that have just tons of those types. Give away something else. <laughs> 84. 84, come on up. This is solder wick. Y'all, everybody here ever use this stuff? The more I repair, the more I love this stuff. And the more I, I learn to get used to it, you put this on the board, put your soldering iron on there, and it will literally suck up. Have you used this yet, Josh? You need, to get, you need to get some. I should have brought him some. Anyway, so solder wick is what it's called, and uh, you can get that most electronics, desoldering braid. Some people call it braid. Uh, the more I repair, the more I really get to where I love this. Especially like pinball coils, you got to get the, the old hole or get it cleared out. You can use it, suck it right up, and that, that'll help you. So, uh, you know, I always keep a pair of locking pliers around. Believe it or not, um, magic marker, right? Yeah. Right, mark where things go. I can remember the first time me and my wife repaired a um, Mortal Kombat. And this has been about, oh, I don't know, 15 years ago or so. And probably when the game went very, <laughs> we were looking at it. And, you know, remember all the buttons and stuff? We just thinking off our... And then all of a sudden I'm like, wait a second, we got now we gotta hook everything back up. And uh, you know, it's so easy to label. But of course, one of the greatest tools that I, that we've had in the next in the last couple years is this guy right here, the smartphone. Take pictures, right? How many of you ever been into something and you get it all you're getting it all apart and then you're like, oh man, now I can't remember how to get it back together. Take pictures and steps, document what you do. And if you want to, send it to us, and we'll, we'll put it out on the web, and everybody can see how you tore it up. But uh, <laughs> anyway, um, I'm not ashamed, so I, I do it all the time. 
But um, so some additional tools that I may not be showing, you know, you're gonna need stuff like um, th this right here. We, we like to call it the magic wand. Do I know what this is? Yep. The gaussing tool. Some of the newer model monitors already come with them, but it's just fun. You know, it's just fun to play with, fun to mess with people. You know, it makes like it real trippy, right? When you when you do this. And uh, so good to have a degaussing tool. You can make these yourself, but why? I mean, you just that board. I don't know. Buy one. Give somebody. Uh, no, they're fun to make. If you want to make your own, there's instructions on how to do that online. So this is something that. You know, as you get to that intermediate, it's just fun to degauss all your your monitors and stuff. We have in our shop has is concrete floor and we have rebar, and you can move a game three feet and it'll look all washed out. Y'all seen that? You see Pac-Man? They'll look like purpley haze colors and stuff. And this will move those electrons back around. I don't get too too technical with it. It just makes it look makes the picture look good. Okay. So anyway. That's just a, a few things. Also, uh, one of the greatest inventions over the last couple of years. You guys got got some of these socket wrenches yet? Man, uh, you know, working up in a game and just, you know, being able to do that in a place where you used to couldn't get a socket. Just fun. Fun, fun, fun to use these. Uh, just a few things that I wanted to, wanted to show you guys. Then when I'm doing board repair or... I mean, you know, sometimes you don't want to remove the dust off because I think that's what's holding half of the 80s games together. You take and move the dust and then it'll quit working. But when you're doing stuff, we like to clean. A lot of times we use a brush like that, something soft that won't hurt. Um, anybody got a question about tools that you need or you use or something you want to recommend? Nobody? You want to give away another prize? Go ahead, Johnson. Okay. Uh, 78. Now, probably the number one thing that we get asked questions about, we field about, we field about 20, 30 questions a day. Our last podcast, podcast one of them got over 7,000 downloads in a week. Trust me, we get a ton of questions. Um, about 80% of them, 85, 90, are to deal with what do you think the most common problem with the game is that most people don't really know how to fix. The monitor issue. It's a monitor issue. Anybody ever have monitor issues? Yeah. All, right? All the time, right? We're not going to go into a lot of monitor repair, but there is on our DVDs and uh, on our websites and stuff, so you guys be sure and check that out. Um, how many of you, we call it the the good old popping tool, right? What y'all know what I'm talking about? Screwdriver with the screwdriver with the right. Exactly. So when we, um, you know, you can take a cord like this. Here's a better example. Here's one I did. I went to bring mine. I was like, I can't find the stupid thing. I make like one of these a month, and I lose all of them. Take a two prong cord like this, or you know, you just need some wires. We cut both ends. Put the alligator clips on them. You guys all seen this? Yeah. Okay, you use it. It's always fun the first time, isn't it? <laughs> the next time we do do a conference, we'll do one on monitor repair, and we'll make all the newbies go pop it for everybody, right? <laughs> it, it, it's like really fun the first couple times. I mean, it, it's really scary. But then when you've done it, you're like, hey, watch this. Turn the lights off. <laughs> behind the back and then you know uh, I'm showing Jonathan how to do this one time and uh, big big clue make sure and turn your game off or you can <laughs> you can pop that thing continuously it'll make all kinds of neat sounds and stuff again you might want to watch the blooper video sometime uh, um, so everybody knows what we're talking about popping tool and I've heard lots of debate we've had people write us and tell us you guys shouldn't tell people to do it that way I've been doing it for about 20 years. It works for me. I haven't blown up yet. I may be a little bit off. And maybe that's a problem. But hey, it works. It's cheap. Don't somebody? Usually, the person that's complaining is also got one for $300 or trying to sell or something. Whatever. Uh, but this is a TV alignment tool. I don't like to stick my hand in the monitor area, especially with rings. 
stuff like that on. I have been uh, juicified a few times. But this is a TV alignment tool. You get them from Bob Roberts. And you can go in there like the horizontal wet pot and try to adjust that. Everybody I know sticks a, a metal Allen wrench in there because it fits. Not a good idea, right? Buy the right tool, you can adjust it. And it has these little cool little extensions and stuff that come with it and make it a little longer so, you know, the less brave you are, the more farther you can get back there. Uh, those are some additional tools. So, anyway, we probably covered pretty much as fast as we can go some uh, of the tools of the trade. So, if you guys don't have that kind of stuff, um, the first one I did, I bought a tackle box. And I used my tackle box because it has little shelves and stuff. That worked pretty good. This one's handy. It's my doctor's bag, you know, when I'm on the go. I just go over there and take care of that. Give away something, Jonathan. We got lots of stuff and not very many people here. 86? 86. Come on, Um, this right here, I want you guys to see. This is a test rig, okay? And don't be saying nothing about it. It might be ugly, but it works, okay? I know the, the term rig is Texas rig there usually, uh, loosely. Um, it's really cool though when we, so it's portable, and you can make this. Basically, it's the inside of a game, right? Now, um, we we heard a great uh, seminar earlier. Who was the very first person? Ken Graham. Ken Graham. And Ken Graham said something last year that has stuck with me for the longest time, and we tell it to everybody, and that is do, use the ASAP approach. So if you're working on a game, always start at power, okay? So first thing that we want to make sure, let's just pretend this is a game. It's a lot easier to carry this thing around than a big cabinet, guys, okay? So what we want to do is before I, let's say you buy a game today, or you buy a game at auction. Everybody goes to American Amusement Auctions and supports them, right? And you go there and you buy a game and, uh, you know, you clean all the rat's nests and stuff like that out of it and defume it and all that stuff. But before we ever turn a game on, one of the first things we want to make sure is that all the prongs are there. We want to make sure that this ground prong is there, right? I always tell people, I'm not going to be over technical. I know that when they made the cord, it had one there, right? So I don't have to technically know why it's there. I just know if it's got one there, it's probably supposed to be there, and I should make sure it's on there, right? So if the cord is in any way, you know, got some electrical tape like this. I mean, folks, if we can't afford a $3 cord, we're definitely in the wrong hobby, right? So we need to replace the cord, whatever, get that. It's just an example here. So make sure that your cord is in really good shape. So we're always going to start at power. I don't care what your problem is, one of the first things we want to know is how is your power? And make sure that, and I've worked on games, I've probably worked on two or three thousand games in the last five years. So give me a little bit of credit, okay? I mean, Chuck E. Cheese will keep you busy working on games. I've had games that have bad power plugs, you know? So we'll check the voltage coming out of there, we'll check the power cord, you know, make sure it's got a ground. Now once we've got it plugged in, we're going to take our meter and we can check, and we show you how to do this, everybody knows, you want to check your power supply. Always do it first without the game plugged in because if you've got a bad power supply, shooting out too high voltage, you certainly don't want to be pumping your board with high voltage or higher voltage than it's required. Here's something that we'll do a little trivia. What do most boards, without everybody knows without looking at the power supply, what, are we, what kind of voltage are we talking about? Got it. AC coming in, 5 or 12. Negative 5. Right, negative 5 going out. It's not very much. A 9 volt battery we all used to suck on when we were a kid and stick our tongue on it, right? So we're almost, 12 volts is almost that. When you're doing this during the winter and sneaking up on your wife or something and touching her, that's about 2,000 volts. Yeah, that's why it hurts, right? That's why I go, pow. So. We need to be careful when we're working around this stuff. If 2,000 volts of static electricity, imagine what it'll do to a game board, right? Or a chip on the board or something. So I'm not going to show a lot of stuff, but you know, you should be in a secure environment. 
I don't show it enough on the videos. You should wear a ground strap. As much care as you can take to protect that board is good. But anyway, here we have a 60 and one board. Now, who knows what this is? Uh, the PS1 is a little for a car or whatever you take it. Right. This is a PlayStation Portable 1. If you can ever find one of those at a garage or something, pick it up because I'll show you something cool that it does. It runs on 15 kilohertz. What's what's important about that? Uh, uh, frequency of a CGA monitor. Right, an older school monitor. So, if you get the wiring right and hooked up, you'll be able to oh, you're right, you see this. Nice. Okay. What's important about that? <laughs> when I'm repairing one of my games in my garage, anybody ever stuck a chair and put a monitor in the chair? <laughs> okay, I'm not the only crazy Two one. Games back to back. Two games back to back. <laughs> okay, I, I don't know. I got some oh, yeah. real Texans in the room. Just like me, right? I mean, you better red deck and eyes. We gonna we gonna hook it up. <laughs> but this is a lot easier to take on the fly. So I just wanted to show you guys this part of our test rig. And uh, as soon as it boots up here, a sink wire right here kind of come unsoldered on us, but you guys can see it, or you saw it. Stick it in there. Anyway, you make a little connector, it runs off 15 kilohertz, and that's how you, you have gain. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that guy. Like the test rig, simple, but I can take their board out, other game, if it's JAMA, hook it up, Oh, it's not your board. We're going to take my monitor, hook it up to their game. It's not your monitor or something like that. That's just a couple of ideas. This is just good for you to have, too. I can set this down on the bench. It's got all the player buttons and stuff. So this is something everybody can easily make. My friend Stan made this one. Uh, the sound actually works. We unhooked it because it was really loud earlier when we were testing it. And, uh, you know, just took it inside of a game and kind of put it here. So that's something that you guys, anybody got a question about that? Just wait for me to give away some more prizes. Go ahead, John. Idiot looks like it. Come on up. Help yourself either a tool or anything like that. That's yours. Oh. Okay. TV says on. We got just about, we'll take about five more minutes and we'll take some questions because maybe you got some game problems we want to discuss. But one of the first things that I always talk about keeping it simple when I'm working on a game is if you can't tell what's wrong, what's right, right? What's going on with the game? When we talk a lot about, we just shot a video uh, not too long ago about a game playing blind. What do we mean by a game playing blind? Monitor goes blind. Right. There's no picture, but everything else seems to work. You can fire and coin and all that. If the game is playing blind, it could be a monitor problem, right? So we try to figure out what does work. So if you got, um, what happens if I turn on a game and I got uh, coin lights and I got a top light, but I have nothing else? What well, could be the problem? Well, coin lights and most of the time coin lights, I should say that, no, not all of them, but top lights almost always run on AC voltage and usually have, don't go through any of this, right? So that's when we start, always start at power. We want to check our power supply, make sure, okay? So sometimes you can't always tell what's wrong, but you can look at what's working on a game. And a lot of times people say, well, I have this problem, this problem, Whatever. Well, what's going on that's right? You know, check your plug. Make sure that you're getting volts. We're going to check voltage here. We're also going to check voltage on our board or at our harness because we could have some bad wiring and so forth. Everybody know how to use the continuity tester? Man, that helps a lot, doesn't it? You can check the wire, start at one end of the wire, go to the other end or a dial check. See if it goes to zero, make sure that it beeps you know that your wires are good. Wiring, big time, these wires, you know, it's so cool when Kim was talking, these boards and games, they never expected us to be using and playing with them 30 years ago. They had one purpose, to make as many quarters as they could in the next couple years, and then they figured they'd end up in a landfill, and they didn't care, right? We're the only people that really care. We're the only people that, that so, 
the fact that any of these games still work with the same wiring, same stuff. Um, so always start there. Look at what works. Um, always start with the obvious. Always tell people, you know, look for places that, you know, where there's smoke, there's usually fire, right? So you learn to learn to use your eyes and learn to have a look. Uh, you know, in the Navy, when they, uh, when the Navy pilots would go out before they would take off. Anybody here flew in the Navy or know some? I just knew a Navy pilot one time. He said they would always make them go out and look at the engine. Why? They weren't mechanics. They had no idea. What they would do is they looked at that engine every time, and pretty soon they got real familiar with it. That way, if they ever come out there and something didn't look right, they might not notice what was, they would notice when something was wrong. Okay? You understand that they weren't mechanics, but they looked at enough good stuff. So, if you the more you look at games, trust your eyes, trust your instincts sometimes when it comes to looking at stuff. Now, having said that, trust your meter more than your eyes, right? Because sometimes fuses will look good and so forth. So, trust your meter even more than you do trust your eyes. Give away something, Jonathan. We still got stuff to go in. 83. The last thing that I want to say is just when you don't know, ask for help. Don't be hard-headed when it comes to working on games. How many of you, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm like that. I still ask for help. I learned something new today working on uh, on William stuff. You know, don't get to the point where you're so confident you're boastful or proud that you you know that you can fix anything because we all need help. And be sure and ask. It's the only stupid person is the one that don't ask, right? So that's why we have a resource. We tell people all the time. Trust me, there, we get questions in, and I'm going. I have no clue what the, what's wrong with your game. But you know what? I know John Costa, <laughs> or I know somebody else, or I'll refer you to somebody, and we'll try to help you out. So by all means, it's better to ask and then fail than just not ask at all and just stick your hand in there. But I'll, I'll be honest, a lot of times you're just going to have to get dirty, right? You're just going to have to get your hands in there, get over the fear, and just step out and, and try some things like that. Um, before we... Get something else away, man. Still got furniture. I bought lots of stuff. 79. Oh, I think that's me. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Does anybody have a question or anybody want to discuss something that you've been working on? Maybe it's been kind of scratching your head. Go ahead. Actually, I have a game that's playing blind right now. It's a uh, Star Wars arcade. Star Wars? Yeah, okay. the, with the vector monitor. And right. I've had it recapped. Uh, but it's been a few years, uh -huh. and it's when I last time I had it recapped, it was because it was playing blind. It actually, you know, was just continually blind. Right. This one's a little more temperamental. It it will power on, you know, take 30 seconds or so, and the kind of comes pulse? up. No, no, doesn't pulse, and it's steady. Uh -huh. But then after 15 minutes or whatever, it seems like after it's been warmed up and really been on. For 15, 20 minutes, then the screen yeah. will go to black. But again, it doesn't stay off. It'll stay it might come for back. a minute or two, and then it'll come back. And you know, generally when you see that, it's, a, it's usually a, it's usually a filter cap. Yeah. That's probably why I fixed it the first time. I mean, that's those little bitty caps. Yeah. That's generally what it is. Here's the problem that we're running into everywhere, and you guys may be aware of this. About five or six years ago, about half the caps that come out were from China and were bad. And that's well documented on the internet. It's been causing problems in every electronic component from about the last couple. Even a lot of our cap kits, uh, that's why I highly recommend uh, that you get your cap kits from Bob Roberts. If you're, everybody knows who Bob is, right? Good guy, realbobroberts.com. Dot net. Dot net, yeah, dot net. Thank you, Johnson. Um, also have somebody with you that will correct you every time you're wrong. It makes you look a lot better. But um, be careful that and a lot of times, because I remember when LCD TVs come out, this was a promise in the arcade gaming industry. They won't screen burn. Wrong. And the caps on them are going to last a long time. 
No, no, no. We and I have done, already done uh, cap kits on a couple games for that, so it may be time to redo uh, even again. They just but, were some junky stuff, or you got a bad connection somewhere. I would. The first thing. Go ahead. I, well, I was just going to say that the is the last time it just seemed to go black. That was it. This time, you know, the symptoms being different, but it'll come on and then go off. That's why I think it's a filter cap this time, okay. uh, which which is filtered without getting real technical, and I, I'm not going. I, I can't do it anyway. I just know that that's an indicator. What I've seen, little bitty caps in your power supply area okay. of your your monitor you might start there, uh, but it also could be a bad solder joint. If if you've ever seen our videos of Michael. Especially the extended cut, the first thing he does on every single monitor he repairs, and he repairs a bunch of them, flips them over and just starts touching up solder everywhere. So go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, with regards to it being something loose and that it's, it, even if it is loose, it's still obviously partly connected to the solder. Yes. As the solder first thing heats up. told me is to get back there and just, I don't know, it may sound bad, but maybe it's just common sense too, just start jiggling wires. Yeah, well, well, I mean, the jiggling wire method has got me shocked plenty of times, yeah, but at the yeah. same time, I'm not going to be, I'll be honest with you, what do we do when the first thing, all of us trade tree chief mechanics, when the car breaks down, we start jiggling wire, you know, checking the battery cable. Sometimes that will help you determine where a loose is. connection right. is, and especially in your power lines going in. That's the first thing he'll do if he was to work on your monitor. He'd flip it over, and he'd start touching up the solder on so, and he's done TV repair and stuff since for about 30 years. So obviously it's not a, a new new problem. So does that help you a little yeah. bit? Anybody else got a question or a comment? Anybody, is there a video maybe that we haven't shot or that you guys would like to see? Or if you don't know, we got, I'll, I'll tell you we got a video on it. Or what's something you guys, we need some feedback that would help you in your repair well, I, I found you guys from the monitor repair thing that you, you talk about your your friend that did it. Uh -huh. I'd like to see more of that, more examples of different, uh, you know, the. Yeah, we're we're hoping to actually get enough to make a monitor video single. We probably have about six, five or six right now that, that are available. I and say and some of the stuff on the DVDs that aren't available on YouTube. I will say that we're we're looking at getting together with Michael again, for you guys that know Michael, and he's got a tube for us, and we're actually going to do a tube swap out. So if you guys are curious about that, like how to find a tube that's compatible, we'll oh, you take the yoke off of it, and yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and align it, and right? Yeah. yeah. So Excellent. he's going to do that got, one. You got a tube that's screen burn, show you how to take an old TV tube, how to know if it'll work in your game, and do that. It is possible. Well, <laughs> kind of fun to do. And cheap. Very cheap. Find an old TV tube. Anybody else? We're going to let you guys go. We're going to give away all the prizes. Um, I've ordered from Bob Roberts. I've also ordered from Zanin. 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 Are they good? Yeah. Zanin, is, from what I, what I understand, a lot of people, they, they're just getting parts. It wasn't really anybody, the manufacturer. But I just know that he was is a little bit picky about who he buys his stuff from, from what I've heard. I don't know. Zanin, though, uh, has been doing cap kits, and I'm pretty sure... Uh, we'll stand by their stuff. Um, we just, you know, off the off the record kind of deal. You know, I P and L games are cheap, but sometimes you get what you pay for too. You know, this yeah, is the, the one problem I, it was a, a WG forty nine hundred the way I did, mm -hmm. and that one all the caps match. The other one was a, a Neotech thirty six inch screen and. It was listed there in that one, you know, mm -hmm. that one part number, but most of the caps did not match the numbers. And so, so I just changed the large values and the bigger ones, and it right. worked. Everybody but, knows you but can. These did not match one to one. You, you, the the microfarads have to match, or they, you know, I don't know if they necessarily have to, but you know, from what we've all been taught, what we can go up is in voltage, and most of the time it doesn't hurt to go up. You know, if it's a 35 volt cap. You can go ahead and take it up to a 50 volt. A lot of times we just do it. But then, and, yeah, what I've heard too will just about literally make you a cap kit when nobody else has it. And they're Texas. We like people from Texas, right? Support the locals. Anybody else? We can let you guys go and have some have some more games. Well, 
Dustin, you want to? I think that's it. I want to make sure. Um, who, who hasn't got got something yet? Come up. If you haven't gotten anything yet, come up and, sure. and come up. And, we have some pickle fries. We got plenty of stuff. If you need a if you need a half ultimate joystick with heavy spring, brand new. Got that in there. Still got the side art. You guys grab whatever you want, whatever's left over. Thank you guys for coming. Good. And enjoy the enjoy the.